This video is about lake formation tags and how lake formation tag based access control strategy works within the lake formation service on AWS. By the end of this video, I hope to have you convinced why you should consider leveraging tag based access controls over traditional name based catalog resources when using lake formation to control resource access. So leveraging lake formation on AWS, we have two ways to assign and manage permissions to our catalog resources. We have name based access and tag based access. Name based access is generally how most people are familiar with assigning permissions. You select the principal, which can be an AWS user or a group of users and assign it access to a specific database or table. Now the tag based access control method uses lake formation tags called LF tags for short. These are attributes assigned to the data catalog resources such as database and tables and to principals such as users in our AWS account to manage authorization to these resources. Tag and key can be anything you want really to help you organize your resources. This is helpful in environments that are growing rapidly with data and help with situations where policy management becomes cumbersome. Another key benefit that you will see is how authorization strategies support column level tagging. So you can restrict access to principles that should not have access to every column in your table. So what values can be assigned to LF tags? So tags can be up to 128 characters. Values can be up to 256 characters and there can be up to 15 values per tag and there could be up to 50 LF tags per resource. Now the characters for the key value pairs can really be anything that you want. You should think of things that will help you organize your data. So for example, a key could be confidentiality with the values being private, sensitive, and public. So perhaps in all of your tables or columns, you don't want everyone to have access to everything and you might use some type of confidentiality tag. You might also want to manage your data by project. So for example, you could have a project for a key and values could be project one, project two. So you might want to ensure that only specific key members have access to tables related to specific projects. All right, so let's look at an example of controlling access with LF tags. So we have user one, user two, user three. And for our resources, we have a customer database, which has two tables, which is the customer info table and order table. Then we got a sales database, which has team members and transactions under it. We have an inventory database, which has an items table and a category table. So one way we can control access is at the database level. So we can assign a tag of customer to the customer database and automatically the customer info and orders table inherit this tag of customer. So if we do the same for the sales database and inventory database, we now have three tags that are being assigned at the database level. So if you look at assigning users access, we'll assign user one the customer tag, which then gives it access to the customer database and tables. But we also want user one to have access to the sales database. Okay, no problem. So that means that it's going to get the sales tag and automatically now user one has access to customers and sales database. Now we want user two to have access to sales database. So it's going to get a sales tag and user three should only have access to the inventory database. So it's going to get an inventory tag. Now in the real world, access is never just cut and dry by specific databases. For example, later on, we learned that user two needs access to the order table in the customer database. So how can this scenario be handled? Well, we can just simply assign the sales tag to the customer orders because let's say, you know, there's some sales data in these orders. So user two should actually have access to this table. So instead of doing some ETL, migrating it into the sales database, all we do is assign this tag and now access has been granted. However, they don't have access to the info table within the customer database. Now, since principles can be user groups, the same can apply to user groups. So you can just simply assign these tags to user groups and all our users that belong to these groups will have the same permissions. All right, so let's look at an example of LF tags at a column level. So using the same two tags of user group one and user group two, in our customer.orders table, we have five columns. So we got a customer ID, order ID, first name, last name, and item name. So our goal here is we want our user group two to have access to our customer ID, order ID, and item name. However, you know, we want to protect our customer's name and not let our users in user group two see what they are. So because LF tags support column level tagging, all we need to do is assign the tags of sales to the customer ID, order ID, and item name. So if user group two now use, let's say, AWS Athena to query this table, they're only going to see the customer ID, order ID, and item name, and they will not have access to the data within the first name and last name column. 
As you're seeing here, we can really organize and simplify the way our data is in AWS with perhaps not having to build some data pipelines to dump this orders table to another location in our data lake and instead just control access through permissions. So at the beginning of the video, I told you why LF tags is better than named resources. And, and let's dive into an example with how this might work with named resources instead. So let's say we had the same users and tables, um, but with named resources, we have to go in and specify, okay, for user group one, we want access to all the tables. So we're gonna have to say, okay, it gets customer info, orders, team members, transaction. Then we're gonna have to have a separate permission for the team members and sales databases, but then also say, you know what, we need to, to delineate customer orders as well. And then do the same thing for user group three. But since there's nothing inherent on the actual tables or columns itself, it becomes more challenging revoking access to specific tables because we have to remember which principles have access to which tables. And this is a simple example with just three users, but imagine we had hundreds of users in our AWS account. You can start to see how it becomes complicated in the real world to manage all of these permissions. All right, so we explained how LF tags work. How do we actually create LF tags and assign it to resources? So within AWS Lake Formation, our data lake administrator would create the tags. So for example, they would create an access key and a restricted value within Lake Formation. So we should see the key and values that were created. And then the next step would be assign tags to data catalog resources. So the data lake administrator would assign these tags to either database or call. Alternatively, a data lake administrator can also grant associate permissions to a specific user. And then that user can then assign a tag to the database that they want. So what's nice about this is the data lake administrator can grant these associate permissions by tags and let power users assign tags to resources as well. So once our tables have these tags, the next step would to grant the LF tag expressions to the principles. So within lake formation, again, the data lake administrator would assign these tags to, let's say user three would then have the customer tag. And that user will be able to interact with that database based on the specified permissions that they've been granted. So if we've only let user three select records, that user would be able to query the database and all the tables within it. So I hope you found this video helpful and you now understand LF tags in AWS Lake Formation. Thanks so much for watching. And if you learned something, please hit that like button and please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos on working with data in AWS. See you next time.